Iri tam yana taj mai sri gurave namaha. Sri jaitani mano vistam stapi tam yana bhutane sam prupa karami amdarati sar parandi ham. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Hagayat Gadadhar Sri Vasari Goa Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Talk to you tonight about inner treasure. We've all experienced times when we felt like we're stuck in life. We've gone as far as we can. We've reached our limits. I'm not that talented. I'll never accomplish my dreams. They're too big. There's too many obstacles. Our message today is no. <laughs> Krishna or God would not have given you the dream, put it in your heart without also giving you the ability to accomplish it. I read a few years ago, some archeologists at a dig in present day Israel dug up 62 pounds of 15th century jewelry. It was a combination of silver and gems, had an estimated value of over $5 million. Now, do you know where that jewelry was found? This is the point of our little anecdote here. It was buried about 18 inches beneath the dirt floor of a cottage that had been continuously inhabited for 500 years. People have been living 18 inches above this treasure for centuries, but they didn't know it was there. So how many people today, comparably, are living ignorant of the treasures right at hand. We all have what we need. God totally packed our bags. He totally equipped us for this particular journey of life. The problem is none of those utensils, none of that equipment's gonna do you any good if you don't open the bag, take them out, and use them. They just remain hidden treasure, you might say. Similarly, we all have talents, gifts, and abilities that we haven't yet tapped into. Potential waiting to be released. When Krishna, God, laid out the plan for his life, he created within you the skill, the wisdom, the creativity, the insight, everything you need to walk your walk, fill your plan. It's not what you have in you, however, I think, which is the point today, which matters as much as what you get out of it. If you're going to reach your highest potential, you're going to have to tap in to that inner treasure. Did you know that Africa has more natural resources than any other continent? And it's interesting how it's one of the most poor places. Neither Europe nor America have anywhere near the resources of Africa. And yet here there are big, clean cities, well-maintained freeways, good infrastructure. People have better homes, better incomes, higher standard of living. But what's the problem? It's not what's inside, but it's what you're failing to get out Similarly, buried inside each and every one of us is his and treasure. There are businesses waiting to be started, books to be written, new ideas, resources, songs put into you by God. So our challenge is don't die with those treasures still inside. You have something to offer that nobody else can offer. You're unique. You're one of a kind. Don't go around envying others, wishing that you had somebody else's gift that you could wear their dress size, that you could live in their house, that you had their talents. Can I tell you that if you had somebody else's gift, it wouldn't help you, it would hinder you. Why? Because you're not created to be them. You're created to be you. If Krishna wanted you to look like them, like, think like them, have their ideas, be shaped like them, then he would have made you in that exact way. Sadrisham chesate shrasha prakriter gyanamapi. Prakriti means nature. Everybody has their own nature, which is given to them, gifted to them by God. And we should not deviate from that. We should follow our own nature, as Krishna says. What can repression, envy, competition really accomplish? In the Bhagavad Gita, if you're familiar, Arjuna was a proud warrior. He championed the cause of righteousness in hundreds and hundreds of other battlefields down thousands and thousands of maldoers. And yet when he saw his friends and his relatives and his teachers facing him in this particular conflict, he lost his heart. He lay down his weapons and he appeared very attractive to him all of a sudden to go off into the forest and be a Brahmin and chant mantras and meditate on lotus ponds and, <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> palm trees and things like that. But Krishna reminded Arjuna of his nature. He said, you can do that. You can quit the battlefield because of temporary inconvenience, temporary pressure, but you won't be happy living in a peaceful forest ashram. Why? Because you're a warrior. 
quoted this verse from Chanukah Pandit, as cows love, would you agree with me? Cows love fresh grasses. Would you also agree with me that calves love the milk of their mothers? And you may not be aware of this in the Western culture, but Brahmins in India, Brahmins have these little tiny, they're not big and they're not soft. They're actually hard as drums. They're kind of in the lower abdomen, right? The ghee belly, right? So it says, as cows love fresh grasses, as calves love the milk of their mother, as Brahmins love eating feasts cooked in ghee, Chhatras or warriors like Arjuna, they love war. That means we've all been created differently to complement each other. It's like we have the head part of the body, the arms part, the stomach part, and the leg part. They're all meant to satisfy and nourish and keep the whole body healthy, but each one works in a different individual capacity. One can't perform the function of the others. Now, similarly, we're all created differently by God with the sole purpose of pleasing God. The fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, 29th verse, it says, Bhuktaram Yagatapasham. There is ultimately one entity who is to be pleased by all of our myriad varieties of talents and abilities. Just like in the body, we have only to please the stomach and then the body becomes completely healthy. Or if there's a big, huge tree, you really don't have to water each flower and root and leaf of the tree. You just have to please the root of the tree. Similarly, in all of creation, there's one living entity whom we have to please. And we do it in any number of different ways. And when that living being is pleased, then the healthy, the body, the social body, the individual body, everybody is healthy, everybody is nourished, everything is harmonious. So you need to step into what God created you to be, knowing you have what it takes. Your gifts, your talents, your inner treasure, that potential should be released. If you do so, you'll step into the fullness of your destiny. It is said you can do all things, not according to your power, but according to the power that's within you, not according to the power of somebody else, not the power of your boss, the stock market, the bank, the economy, according to the power of Krishna or Almighty God who is within you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In other words, it boils down to this. What are you believing? If you ground thinking I'm average, I'm not that talented, I'm not that great, then that treasure is not going to come out. It's going to stay overlooked, buried. Can we encourage you tonight to do yourself a favor? Quit living discouraged. Quit belittling yourself. When Krishna was created you, he wasn't having a bad day. He didn't make a mistake when he made you. You're not lacking. You're not at a disadvantage. You're not shortchanged. You have been created in the image of Almighty God. You have vast treasures on the inside. Now, if it's going to come out, you have to have the attitude, I've got what it takes. We read from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Indra faced the very imposing, huge demon, Vritrasura. But Indra had everything that he needed in order to kill Vritrasura. However, when he came in front of this big, strong, menacing, and imposing Vritrasura, he started to talk himself out of it. Now, Krishna had already blessed Indra to win the battle. Indra had an armor that was impenetrable. He had a weapon that was empowered by the austerities of the sage Desiti. Vritrasura himself wanted Indra to kill him so he could give up his life and go back to a life of devotional service. Vritrasura gave Indra a pep talk. He says, come on, you can do this. You can do this. Yeah, you can do it. Just raise your arm, cock your arm, and just release that weapon, you know. Come on, come on, come on. Specifically, Vritasura said to Indra, Indra is the king of the heavenly planets, the thunderbolt that you carry to kill me has been empowered by the prowess of Lord Vishnu and the strength of Didichi's austerities. And since you have come here to kill me by Vishnu's order, or Krishna's order, there's no doubt I shall be killed. Your victorance, victory, opulence, and all good qualities are assured. So when Indra couldn't talk himself up to the task, his enemy, Brutasura, did so. So how many times, like Indra, would we talk ourselves out of going 
to the next level. Well, I could never open that temple. I could never break that addiction. I could never stand up and talk before an audience. I could never be in management. I could never, thank God, Brad's never, he said, never said I could never do kirtan. Jai Krishna said he, he didn't say that 50 years ago when he started his kirtan career. So Krishna is saying to you tonight, your treasure is there on the inside. It may be buried under doubt, fear, disappointments, what didn't happen. It may be buried under low self-esteem, intimidation. But the good news is, it's still there. You may have talked yourself out of it, but you didn't talk Krishna out of it. Krishna doesn't abort dreams. If you'll get an agreement with him, he'll still bring your dreams to pass. Now listen to this prayer by the creator of this universe, Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma says, O oh Krishna, object of my worship, I am born from your navel for the purpose of creating the universe. Please empower and proceed, for you are the one friend and soul of the universe. If it is your desire, may the knowledge of creation within me be manifested by your mercy. At this point, there was nothing. There was nothing. Lord Brahma asked Krishna to empower him from within to create the universe, and Krishna grants Brahma's promise with these words. O Brahma, be neither depressed nor anxious. We can tell that to ourselves, right? Be neither depressed nor anxious about the, that which is you, you are going to create, that which you're going to bring out of you. I have already placed, Krishna says to Brahma, the knowledge of how to create the universe within your heart. And in the course of following me and bringing this creation out, you're going to see me shining like the sun within the core of your heart. Now, why don't we see tonight that that same Krishna, who was within the core of the heart of Brahma, is also present within each and every one of our hearts. If you'll just step into the middle of his plan for your life, there's nothing which is impossible to achieve. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. I'm guessing some of you have been sitting on the sidelines too long, celebrating everybody else. Well, why don't you decide to get out what the Lord has already put within you? Why don't you decide to dig out your inner treasures? Now, it's good to celebrate others, but Krishna's message tonight is that he wants to do something amazing in your life. Krishna wants you to be celebrated. I heard about a little girl in a small village in Sweden who was terribly poor, and unskilled, so she could only get along by doing the most menial of jobs. Now, she loved to sing, and despite her poverty, she dreamed of someday becoming a great singer. She began to go out and sing on the street corners, hoping passersby would toss her a copper or two. And every day she sang in wind and rain, heat or cold, yet she barely had enough at the end of the day to even buy food with it. And some people started protesting to the town council that it wasn't right for children to be seen on the streets in rags begging. One day, a great musician came to pass by and heard her. He was entranced by her beautiful voice. He took the ragged urchin home and began to teach her how to use her glorious voice to its full extent. In time, she became the toast of two continents. Jenny Lind became known and loved by her millions of fans as the Swedish Nightingale. What's the point of this story? When you use what you have, the master will show up. The master will take what seems average, ordinary, like a poverty-stricken girl on a street corner and make her celebrated all over the world. If we use what we have in the natural, the master, Krishna, will add his supernatural and amazing things will begin to happen. In the Bhagavad Gita, practically the last verse, Sanjaya says, Yatra Yogeshwaro Krishna Yata Partha Dhanodaya Yata Sri Amidhira Dhruvanitya Wherever there's Krishna and wherever there are his devotees, who celebrate him and honor him by chanting his holy names are his victory, opulence, morality, and celebration. It's not too late. You're not too old. 
You're not too young. You're not too poor. You're not too undereducated. You're not too low born. When you believe, the power comes out. The inner treasure comes out. When you believe, Krishna is going to give birth to your promises. I've learned it's just as easy to talk yourself into your inner treasures as to talk yourself out of them. Instead of thinking of all the reasons why you can't get well, why you can't accomplish a dream, why your marriage is not going to last, why not zip that up? Instead of talking yourself out of it, start talking yourself into it. It's Krishna's will. I can do anything. He can make a way where I don't see a way. I'm equipped, talented, empowered. I have hidden treasures inside that I can tap into whenever I need them. Can I tell you that Krishna loves you too much to leave you as average? Krishna wants to push you to greatness. And when you make your move, you're going to start feeling a boldness that you never felt before. Deep down, you're going to feel a stirring, a restlessness, a supernatural strength. Once you start believing and getting into agreement with what God says about you, nothing is going to hold you back. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. After the 700 verses of the Bhagavad Gita were spoken by Krishna to Arjuna, and all of Arjuna's latent power was pulled out of him by Krishna, Arjuna declared, Nashta Moha Smitir Labda. Yes, my initial fear, my initial weakness was because I had covered over the power that God had planted within me. But now due to Krishna's cleansing, purifying words, the dust has been removed from the mirror of my heart. I've regained my memory. I am free from illusion. And I'm prepared to act according to Krishna's instructions. The stronghold was broken. And you don't really know what's on the inside until you put a demand on your potential. You may be tempted in the face of a challenge to shrink back, thinking, I can't do that. That's way over my head. Yeah, it may be over your head, but can I tell you, it's not over Krishna's head. You have to come into this new confidence. You have to be willing to do something that you've never done. After all, it said you can't walk on water unless you get out of the boat. You have to be willing to take some risks. The key is to start feeling yourself full of possibilities. Stir up your gifts. Get ready to go places you've never gone. Do what you've never done. There's treasure on the inside of everyone. No exceptions. Krishna didn't leave anybody out. If you'll just not get discouraged, not let people talk you out of it, not let your own thoughts tell you, your average, your ordinary, nothing special about you, then you're going to end up extracting from vast reservoirs of talents, favor, and abilities from within. Just keep taking those steps of faith, honoring God, chanting His holy names, being your best, talking yourself into, not out of, His service. You do that, and my guarantee is your treasures are going to be released. You may feel that you can never accomplish the big things that Krishna is putting in your heart. You don't have the talent, the resources, the connections. Well, you may not have, but Krishna does. And when you make your move, Krishna or God makes his move. In 1991, we had the idea to build a temple in, of all places, Spanish Fork. How did you guess? <laughs> we didn't have any money. We didn't have any connections, no devotees lived in the area, nobody that wore neck beads, nobody that chanted Hare Krishna. Very few people had heard of the Bhagavad Gita. I don't think anybody heard of the Srimad Bhagavatam. But when we stepped out of the safe zone into the faith zone, guess what happened? The master stepped in. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We had to secure this eight and a half acres for the property. We had $17,000, uh, and the owners wanted a $25,000 down payment, so we had to come up with $8,000, really, all of a sudden. In those days, we used to sell llamas back in the late 90s, early 90s, and llamas would sell for $2,000, $3,000. The most we'd ever gotten for a llama was $4,000, but we needed $8,000, and we needed it pronto. Otherwise, somebody else is going to pick up the land. At that time, we had a bluish-black llama. 
Bluish black is the Krishna color. Krishna is called Sham, which means the color of monsoon cloud in the rainy season. So we'd call this bluish black Krishna colored Lama Shamin. A local businessman who owns a chain of music stores up and down the Wasatch Front, Bryant Summerhays, came shopping for a llama. We're looking out over the fence and I'm pointing out the female llamas. This one's 2,000, this one's 3,000, this one's 5,000. And he didn't have a single glance for any of the llamas. His eyes went right like a laser to the Krishna colored llama and said, how much is she? And I didn't even think about it. Just the words came out of my mouth, eight thousand dollars he wrote me out a check on the spot <laughs> and then we had the task of having secured the land in a miraculous supernatural way of building a temple how are we going to build a temple my body's never built a temple before she doesn't have an architectural degree she's an art degree at the university of london she's not licensed to practice and yet some or other we built one of the most beautiful temple buildings in all of america let me ask each and every one of you. Is there something you're missing out on in your life? Is your inner treasure perhaps buried under fear, doubt, or what someone said about you? Can I tell you that you owe it to yourself? You owe it to the world? You owe it to your family? You owe it to your God, to tap into your hidden treasure. Krishna has spoken promises over your life. He's put dreams in your heart. We beg you not to talk yourself out of them. Start talking yourself into them. Get up every morning knowing you have exactly what you need. You're not lacking. You're not shortchanged. You're wonderfully and fearfully made. If you believe this, you need to get ready. The master is going to add his supernatural power to your natural power. The master is going to bring out hidden treasures. He's going to take you places you could never imagine in this life. And next life, you'll go back to home, back to God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Thank you for your kind attention. If you have any questions, we'll entertain them downstairs over dinner. But now you're invited to stand up and stretch. And we'll have our old, experienced, 50 year kirtaner backed up by our one day kirtaner on the cartels leading everybody. Hare <laughs> Bob.
Jai 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 Jai